I gotta make a holster. Actually, I gotta make two. Josie Wales had two. All right, these are the 1847 Colt Walkers. Of course, these are reproductions. These are made by Uberti in Italy. Um, a pretty good copy of them. And I gotta make a copy of the holster itself. And I've been looking online, trying to find some different pictures. And really, there's a few screenshots from the movies on there. And they're, you know, sort of decent. But um, one of the things you'll notice right off if you've seen any of the pictures of this is the holster is held straight up and down and it doesn't cover completely to the end of the barrel. It only comes to about there, which leaves about four inches of the barrel sticking out. Um, they do not appear to have a back flap on the back side of the holster. So it looks to me like it's just a tab that comes down. It's probably sewn back to the material. Really a simple, a plain and simple type holster. And the belt is also the same way. It doesn't have any fancy designs on it. The only thing I can say about the belt is the belt buckle is a unique belt buckle. Now I could not find one online. So I got a chunk of brass and I'm going to take a coping saw and make my own. The belt appears to be about, oh, I would say two and a half inches wide. <clears throat> and of course where the belt buckle itself goes should be an inch and a half is about the, the average size belt buckle. You can tell the, it tapers up it tapers down, I guess, to where the buckle is. So we'll go two and a half inches wide on the belt and uh, where the the billets are will be an inch and a half to fit in the belt buckle and the belt buckle itself is probably going to be two and a half inches wide it appears in the screenshots of the movie to be just as tall as the widest part of the belt um, there are some reproductions out there they're a little spendy but um, i'm going to give this a shot and try to make my own all right, first thing we got to do is make a pattern when we're doing this. And I get a lot of my leather and leather supplies from Weaver Leather Supply. Now they don't, I don't get paid anything from them. Uh, I watch tons of their videos. There's a fellow named Chuck Dorsett who does a, a bunch of leather tutorials. And he does a fantastic job of keeping you entertained and educated. Um, and one of the nice things about it is when you get the leather from them, they wrap it up in this paper, which is about the perfect weight for making a pattern. So we're going to cut a piece out and use it to make the holster for this. Now, I don't need this whole big piece here, and I, put, I got plenty of this paper. So we're going to need something roughly as big as the cutting mat I got down here. So we'll just kind of cut it out kind of random right now and then fine tune it as we go. First thing I'm going to do is fold it in half-ish to establish the center line for my holster. All right, that'll be where I lay the center of the pistol. So we're gonna bring it down here at the end. I know I don't need all this paper down here. And then we'll roll it over and we'll take a pencil and kind of do a tracing of it here. Then we'll roll it over the other way and get a rough idea of where it's gonna be on that side. Now the paper is gonna be a lot thinner than the leather itself. So that is going to take up space. So I'm sure this is going to end up being wider than those two lines I just drew there. Um, this is going to be, this, this pattern will be able to be used for right or left. And of course, I got to make both of them for this. So all I do is when I get one figured out, just flip it over the other way, cut out my piece of leather, and I've got both left and right. All right, once you got these lines on here, you'll probably come out Oh, I'd say about three quarters of an inch, somewhere around there. And kind of sketch a little line on there and come across to about there. There is a slight dip for the trigger guard, but it completely covers this up. And again, this will be on this side over here. So once we get this side established, we'll cut it, flip it, and trace it so that we get something here and then cut out for the trigger cover. It's okay if we make a few mistakes on this because it's just paper. You don't want to make the mistakes on the leather.
All right, now that we got that established, pistol is going to go in there like that. This should come over and cover it. And we're going to cut out a little dip for the trigger guard, which is probably going to be something in that neighborhood. And then this will curve up a little bit. And come over about there. And the hammer is exposed, and right now I've got the hammer under there, so actually a little bit more, I think. But this is why we use uh, paper first. And then move to the leather. Now we just gotta make this a little bit wider. and see if that fits any better in there. Yeah, I think that'll give me enough room to stitch right there. And if it's not exact, I'm okay with that. trimmed up next thing I got to do is punch some holes actually the next thing I want to do is establish a stitch groove Okay, all the holes are punched in this thing now. Now, did I get this right on the first try? Probably not. Is it a big deal? Eh, you know, it can become a little expensive, but um, I'm sure I'm not the only person who's messed one up on the first try. And we're gonna go ahead and bevel the edges on this thing. Uh, we're only gonna do certain edges. We're gonna do the outsides here. We're gonna do both sides the rest of the way because these two seams are gonna line up and be sewn together and then I'll burnish that edge there and I don't want it to be rounded in between there. I want it to be the whole thing rounded together, not just, you know, not each individual piece. So take a little beveling tool and there's where that pin line disappears at. thing left to do now really before I start stitching it is to dye it and I'm gonna use I'm gonna use this Phoebe's light brown pro dye 
And normally I would dip this in there, but I think this time I'm just going to use a dauber and put it on there. drive a little bit. I went ahead and sewed the flap down on the back there and I should have enough room to get a belt through there. So what I'm going to do next is go ahead and get this glued up and get it sewn together. Um, and sewing, I use a saddle stitch. I do it all by hand, which is a whole lot, it's not faster by any means, but it's uh, a lot sturdier stitch because you're basically making double loops all the way through this thing where a machine, it puts a little twist in it between the two layers. Um, saddle stitch has got to be the strongest stitch you can do. And um, we're going to go ahead and get the couple needles threaded up. I've got my little roll of thread here. I'm going to peel off about four times what I'm going to need there because it takes up space every time it goes through there. Uh, I may do a little bit more than that just to have a little extra to work with because it's a whole lot easier to uh, if you've got too long a thread than it is if you don't have enough. That is, that's, it sucks. Trust me, I've done it. You have to go back and add in three stitches worth of thread. No fun whatsoever. I also do not tie knots on the end of my uh, thread when I run it through the needle. All you do is just pull a little bit through and then just let it fold over. It stays in there fine. Uh, you gotta be you gotta be careful. Sometimes you can pull it off, but easily, just as easy, you can thread it back on there. And depending on how much thread you have on there, you can pull quite a bit through, and it kind of gets takes up some of the slack, and gets it out of your way. So I pulled probably about a foot extra thread through there. And I'll go ahead and get the other needle threaded up. And this is a wax thread. So we'll pull about that much through and then just fold it. And that's not too unmanageable there. And I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing glued up, let the glue tack up a little bit, line my uh, blowgun darts through there again to line the holes up, and then we'll get to selling. We'll start up one hole, back stitch one, and then proceed with my stitching. So the stitching is, looks to me, it did pretty, not too bad on this one anyways. Uh, it's pretty even. I like the diamond punches on there, the diamond chisels, because it makes the thread look the same as it goes down there. Kind of a, I don't know, like half a herringbone, I guess. Now this is pretty much done. Now the ultimate test. Now it doesn't look like it's gonna fit, and it's probably not gonna fit perfectly right away. Actually, that's not too terrible. All right, sometimes when you're wet molding a holster, you'll, you'll get the leather wet. Uh, in this case, I heat it up with hot water, and what that does is that causes the leather to get really hard. But you'll take a tool and kind of work around the edges of stuff, flare the edge out a little bit, work it in there really good so it's real well-defined lines on there. But, and, and it really aids in the retention of it. But I do not want this holster to look that way because it doesn't look that way in the movie. So I, that's pretty close right there. I do got to slick the edges up on it a little bit and I'm, I'm pretty happy with it just the way it is. Um, might have to, I definitely have to slick the edges, sand that down a little bit and slick that. And then I may get it wet a little bit and uh, 
wrap the gun in some saran wrap or something so it doesn't get wet since I don't have a blue gun for this. This is what's referred to as a blue gun. Of course it's blue, but it's just a plastic replica. Dimensionally it's exactly the same as the gun it was modeled off of, but it's for making holsters so you don't have to worry about getting these wet and you cram them down in there. Um, so they won't they won't get harmed. They're also used for training too or practice, you know, defensive tactics and stuff like that. But anyways, we're going to get this thing slicked up first and then we're going to get get it wet and mold this gun to the uh, mold this holster to the gun. And of course, this is the left-handed one. I still got to make the right-handed one. I didn't want to do both of them at the same time, just in case I didn't quite get it right. But I think that pattern is pretty good. And then from then on, if I ever want to make any more of these, I'll just keep that pattern, label it as what it is, and then I'm good to go. All right, I've taken the holster and wet it down really well. And I've taken the gun and wrapped it up in some plastic wrap. And now I'm gonna shove it in there. And I put several layers of it under. Not that it's gonna make a lot of difference, but it should make the, the pistol fit in there a little easier than it did before I wet it. Now I can shape it a little bit too. I can kind of flare that edge a little bit. That'll also aid in getting the pistol in and out, and I can flare it a little bit around the trigger guard, and should make it go down in there a little bit farther, so I can probably get closer to my, yeah, it gives me about three and three quarter inches sticking out of the end now, which I think is pretty close to what it was in the movie. It's hard to tell. Make sure it's lined up pretty good, because at this point, you can move it around a little bit if you have to. If you wanna make sure your seams are straight, and everything looks good, this is the time to do it. I think we're gonna call that good. Now I'm actually gonna take this out and set it in the sun for a little while. Come in here, grab another piece of leather because I've already got my pattern now and it's time to make another one for the other side. This is a left-handed one, now you gotta make the right-handed one.
right guys, there it is. That's my version of the Josie Wales, the outlaw Josie Wales uh, holster. Uh, did hand make the belt buckle. That was really a task. Uh, don't know if I'd ever do that again. But it's uh, an extremely heavy, heavy setup with both of these 1847 Colt Walkers in here. Um, I, I think I know why he wears it so high up on the waist is so that his hips will keep it from coming down. Otherwise, it's gonna probably snatch your pants to the ground. Um, good heavy rig. I still gotta oil it up, but right now it's all dyed, it's all assembled, and other than a little bit of oil, it's pretty much finished. Thanks for taking a look at making this holster with me. It's uh, a lot of work. Uh, I give props to those guys that do the uh, leather making videos because uh, that's a lot of work doing the video and the leather at the same time. Anyways, thanks for watching.